Okay, welcome to the second in our series of short videos looking at aspects of information failure. Let's take a few minutes to think about the market for insurance. And this is a good example again of how uh, information asymmetries and information failures can lead to potential market failure. Uh, can you use some economics to help explain the data in the following chart? This chart shows the average car insurance premium in the UK in pounds per year, and it's organised by age in terms of years, 20, 25, 35, 45, and so on, up to and including people aged 75. Uh, you can see there's quite a big difference in average car insurance premiums, and keep in mind, of course, that the average premium hides variations around the mean. Uh, typically, for example, younger drivers face much higher car insurance premiums. They pay, on average, £850 premium per year. Partly, of course, that's because... Uh, they are more at risk, perhaps they're less experienced drivers, uh, the impact of testosterone behind the wheel, social pressures to drive at speed and so on. Uh, the lack of experience, the higher risk profile increases the premium that insurance companies will charge for younger drivers. There are ways around this, of course, for example, a black box uh, helps to monitor your driving habits and can bring down the premiums quite a bit. It's interesting that actually nearly one-fifth of all drivers don't have insurance. That's one reason why the average insurance premiums go up. As you can see, though, the insurance premiums come down with age, with experience, for example. Lowest is for drivers of my age, about 55 years of age, but still pretty expensive, about £10 a week to insure your vehicle. And premiums then surge for drivers in the, in the upper age bracket, perhaps because of higher risk, uh, perhaps because demand's pretty inelastic for those people. If you can afford to drive, you're pretty reluctant to stop driving, even if insurance premiums go up. Uh, the, the, the ability to drive is a key feature of independence in older age. But a very interesting price profile according to age there. What is insurance? Well, insurance is essentially a market contract to protect against well-defined risk. You're buying a service, essentially. You're being insured against risk and the insured pay a premium for doing so. And the basic principle of insurance is the concept of risk pooling. So insurance companies don't, don't just identify the risk of any one person. I mean, they could technically do that, but it's very time consuming and costly. What they do is they build uh, risk pooling around the law of large numbers, the law of big numbers. If you have enough uh, data points, that brings down the standard deviation of a random event allowing an average price to be set. Here's an example of insurance in action. These, these are the leading private health insurance companies in Great Britain by plan owners. Beep is the biggest. AXA, PPP is the second biggest. Aviva and one or two others, including Vitality Health and Alliance, have been quite, quite uh, positive in terms of their media recently pushing their programmes. The minority of people in the UK take out private health insurance. It's only about 7 million people and many people can't afford health insurance. And it's interesting, just to think about, interesting to think some about uh, the information economics associated with the health insurance industry. One of them, which I want to focus on in this video, is the concept of what's called adverse selection, which stems from asymmetric information. And there's a very good video on this on marginal revolution if you want to uh, take this further. Let's go through the basics of adverse selection. If you think about it from the health insurer's point of view, Bupa, AXA, Vitality Health, etc. Typically, they know less than their consumers about existing conditions. So in this situation, essentially the seller of the health insurance premium uh, policy knows less than the buyer. In a previous video, uh, the seller knew more than the buyer in the used car market. So health insurers typically know less than their consumers about existing conditions, maybe some chronic health issues. Uh, if they price on average cost, if they base the, the price they're going to charge on the average cost of insuring people, that event essentially is pooling the risk of insuring thousands of potential claimants. But for healthy consumers, well, if you think about it, if I'm young and healthy, I probably won't be thinking, well, what's the worth? What's, it's not worth my while taking out health insurance. It's a high price. I'm highly unlikely to have to use it. So I'll choose not to buy health insurance, perhaps until I'm in my late 40s, mid 50s, early 60s. And if healthy consumers leave the market, or if healthy consumers don't even enter the market, 
uh, then you have a bigger balance of people in the market looking for health insurance, uh, most of whom may have chronic conditions. The average cost of insurance goes up if healthy consumers leave the market or don't even join it. It then becomes harder to sell to consumers and the market is typically left with a higher proportion or a higher ratio of, of increased risk consumers. And again, you can see the, the problem here. Uh, if you have a, a preponderance, a dominance of high risk consumers, that's going to drive up health insurance. So adverse selection is typically seen in health insurance. Those people most likely to buy health insurance are the people most likely to use it. Heavy smokers, heavy drinkers, people perhaps with chronic illness, including diabetes or obesity. The health insurance company knows this, therefore raises the average price of insurance cover. And this can price some healthy, low-risk consumers out of the market. This leaves the market with predominantly high-risk consumers, which then causes health insurance premiums to rise again, creating a negative cycle. So adverse selection in the health insurance market can lead to uh, people being priced out of the market. And if you look at average health insurance premiums in the UK from 90, 2018, forecast through to 2024, the average health insurance premium is already £1,400 and uh, is forecast to keep rising each year. That makes health insurance less attractive uh, to people. The key problem here, which is being aware of, you should be aware of, is what's called selection bias. So the insurance company cannot see all of the insurance risk parameters. Health insurance tends to attract sick people. And the other big issue is the one of uh, moral hazard. Uh, economists fear, worry about moral hazard. If you insure against risk, so if people are insured generous health insurance, they may well change their behaviour because they have some sort of guarantee of treatment. Uh, the insured may therefore take more risks as a result. So the insurance market is a good example of information failure. Again, you might want to think about how uh, employers, for example, or people can access better quality affordable health insurance, uh, what the ways around this particular problem might be.